This is a Sutotal production. Alright, hello surveyors. This is our fifth practice video for chapter four. Alright, so in this one we're given uh, formulas and we have to write Lewis structures and give their molecular geometry. Alright, and so there's a slide that lists out all these molecular geometries. Now, in terms of looking at our Lewis structures, um, by convention it tends to be that our first atom specified tends to be our central atom. All right, so you kind of always want to start with that in mind, right? The nitrogen here would be in the middle, and there's two oxygens there, so there'd be an oxygen. I'm just going to put an oxygen on, on either side. I mean, it doesn't matter. I'll, I'll explain the molecular geometry as we go. But for NO2 here, um, what we would need to do is go to the periodic table and figure out what's the number of valence electrons for nitrogen, All right? And so if you look at nitrogen here, it's got one, two, three, four, five, right? So You've got five plus two times whatever oxygen has, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, plus two times six. And then you notice this also has a charge. This is the polyatomic ion nitrite. So you need to also add one electron because it's a negative one charge. That means it's got, it got an extra electron. So that means we're looking at pretty much six times three or 18 total electrons. Now, based off of what we've just written right here, that's four of the 18. So the easiest thing to do would be, let's just go ahead and fill in an octet around all these oxygens. So each oxygen currently has two, so I need to put six more, like so, all right? So this would be two, four, six, eight, two, four, six, eight, so a total of 16. So I'm still missing two. And that's when you can go ahead and start putting them on, putting them as lone pairs on the central atom. Now, when we look at this, the, nit the oxygens have an octet, they have eight, but nitrogen does not. So what tends to happen is some of these lone pairs on these terminal atoms, they tend to come in to donate inward like this. So a better way to look at this would be as though you have a double bond with an oxygen and then a single bond with a separate oxygen and then that nitrogen has a lone pair. All right. Now, based off this, this is, would be the structure we would expect. So I'm going to put the double bond here and get rid of that lone pair and get rid of that arrow. So this would be, this is just the cleaner version, right? Now, what's the molecular geometry of this? Well, you need to look at the electron domains around the central atom. There are one, two, three domains, right? One domain in the form of a double bond, one domain in the form of a single bond, and one domain in the form of a lone pair. Now, with this in mind, what does this mean? Well, for a molecular geometry or molecular shape, depending on which class I'm talking to, but with your molecular geometry here, um, you can only really see the bond ones. So this type of geometry, when you have lone pairs, right, three starts at thinking about, oh, it could be trigonal planar, but this bond is invisible. So it really just kind of looks like this right which is bent so the molecular geometry for this would be bent right where one of the one of the domains is a lone pair so it looks bent so that's the lewis structure that's the geometry all right next up we have nh3 this one's not too bad nitrogen's your central atom and you're going to have three hydrogens on it okay now in this case remember nitrogen has 1 2 3 4 5 so you have 5 plus one per hydrogen, right? Because hydrogen's right there. So plus, I'm just gonna say plus three, that's eight. So now when we drew these original bonds, we had two, four, six. So we're missing two, and that's gonna look like a lone pair. And that's our Lewis structure for ammonia or trihydrogen nitride. Um, but that's the Lewis structure we would expect. Now with this, it does have four domains, but since that's not a bond, we can't call this tetrahedral right one of these domains is not a bond so the next one in line would be trigonal pyramidal right so that's trigonal pyramidal all right next up we have bf3 so we're going to start with bf f oh my f looks weird sorry y'all and then another f all right now 
when we look uh, at our valence electrons, boron here has one, two, three. And then we're going to have three fluorines, so we, we're really going to say three times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three times seven. So that becomes 21 plus three or 24. All right, now, um, with all of these electrons, right, I've got two, four, six. So I've got another 18 to go. So let me start by just putting the octets on these fluorines. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So each fluorine now has eight electrons. So it's eight, 16, 24. That's all of our electrons. So we're done. Right, the these halogens, right? These guys right here, they tend to only have one bond, so I'm I'm not going to be putting a double bond on here to give boron the octet. Okay, so it's actually done, and so it only has three domains. All three of them are bonds, so and all three of them are going to be equivalent because they're all with the same atom fluorine. So this, when you have three equivalent domains that are bonds, this is going to be trigonal yet again but not pyramidal right because pyramidal has that lone pair right this is trigonal planar planar it's flat like a pancake all right it only occupies one plane right that's why it's called planar all right next up we have co32 minus this is carbonate this is the carbonate polyatomic ion and so carbon is the central atom and i'm going to go ahead and put those three oxygens with one bond i'm going to put the oxygen there all right, uh, hopefully this doesn't confuse things. All right, let's do this. There you go. <laughs> I'll draw a line there. All right, now let's count up our valence electrons. Carbon here has one, two, three, four. And then I have three oxygens, and each one of those has one, two, three, four, five, six. So three times six. And then carbonate has a negative two charge, so I need to add an additional two electrons. So what is that? This is 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. That's 24. All right, so now we have 2, 4, 6. So why don't I go ahead and do the same thing I did previously. I'll go ahead and put the lone pairs here. All right, now that gives me 24. But carbon here loves to either have a plus 4 or a negative 4 charge. Plus or negative. So really, it's going to need its octet. Boron is that oddity that doesn't necessarily need it. But carbon's definitely going to need it. So what we would really expect is one of these lone pairs, I'm going to squiggle through it so it's not there. One of these lone pairs should do something like this. So this would be the Lewis structure we would actually expect for carbonate. All right. And so I'm going to clean it up a little bit without all the trash on it. So you're looking at something like that. And this actually, that double bond could have been but. but could have been here or here, right? It doesn't necessarily have to be there. That's something called resonance. Oh boy, resonance. But so that would be the cleaner version. Now, what does it have? It has one, two, three bonding um, domains. And so there's no lone pairs on that carbon. So this, this, as complicated as it is, right, with the double bond and stuff, it is also trigonal planar like BF3 was. Uh, next up, we have CBr4, so that would be a chlor uh, carbon with one, two, three, four bromines on it. Now, when we look, count up our valence electrons, carbon, remember, had one, two, three, four. And then we have four bromines, so how much does the bromine have? All right, now, in terms of counting our valence electrons, we skip this D block, so it's going one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven. So it's going to be four times seven. So that's 28 plus four. That's 32. All right. So what I recommend we do is we start by just putting a bunch of lone pairs on the terminal atoms. One, two, three, four, five, six. Right. So that's eight there. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's eight on that bromine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight on that bromine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Eight on that bromine. So now I've got eight plus eight plus eight plus eight that's 32 I've put all my electrons there now also you'll notice carbon has an octet it's happy it's good every bromine has an octet it's happy it's good so now let's look at it for the molecular geometry that central atom has four domains all of them are bonding so that means that this is a tetrahedral okay four bonding four bonding domains 
no lone pairs, tetrahedral. Next up, let's look at our sulfur here. Uh, all right, so sulfur is going to be in the middle, and we're going to see an oxygen, an oxygen, an oxygen. There's four oxygens, so another oxygen. All right, so I'm going to start with that backbone, and then sulfur and oxygen, they both are in the same column. So when you count up the valence electrons, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, both of them have six. So it's really not six, it's, it's going to be four, five, so it's five times six, but I'm also going to have to add two, right, because that negative two means I have two additional electrons. So I've got 30 plus two, that's 32. So I'm going to start by putting the lone pairs in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Now at this point for y'all, I would actually be fine if y'all said, okay, this is it. Um, this is the structure. But when we learn about formal charge, what you're actually going to see is that sulfur, any of, any of these, right, so... When you start getting in the third row here on the periodic table, like with like how sulfur is, it can actually have an what we call an expanded octet. It can have more than eight electrons. And so really what this actually would look like, a more correct Lewis structure, would be that you would get Would you get that right and once you start once we start learning about formal charges and all that stuff because we haven't gotten there yet but once we start learning about that it makes sense of why we get these double bonds here and it also makes sense of sulfur being able to have an expanded octet um, because it has a formal charge of zero and these two oxygens have a formal charge of zero um, but anyway, but it doesn't matter which one of these you actually used. What you're going to see is that for this, it has one, two, three, four domains. And even though two of them are single bonds and two of them are double bonds, it doesn't matter. They're all bonding domains. So this is just like the CBR4. This is a tetrahedral molecular geometry. All right. So I did my best to try and cover like most of the big ones that you need to be aware of. All right. Okay, well, uh, until next time, I shall see you later, surveyors.